Vietnamese people love the national football team passionately, and the production team of Random Football is no exception. Therefore, we will produce the next two editions in the tactical analysis series to analyze in detail the Thai team, who has topped Group A at this year's AFF Suzuki Cup. You should pay attention closely to this video to have a better understanding of the opponent of the Vietnamese national football team in the upcoming semi-final. Finally, show us your support by subscribing to our YouTube channel and visiting the link in the description below to interact with us now. We will also produce bilingual English Vietnamese content on two main channels of the RFC system. After the incident with coach Akira Nishino at the second qualifying round of the 2022 World Cup, Wall Elephants has appointed Alexander Polking, a young coach who understands Thai football very well after many years working in the Thai league. Perhaps many of you also realize that the German and Brazilian citizenship holder also worked for a short period at the Ho Chi Minh City Football Club not so long ago. However, Alexander Paul King will only manage the Thai national football team for four months as a temporary replacement. The goal set by both sides is none other than the AFF Suzuki Cup Championship since the last time War Elephants were crowned in 2016. Now, let's take a look at the formation of the Thai national football team at the AFF Suzuki Cup 2020. Thailand still uses a back four system in front of their goalie, but they sometimes change their system from 4-3-3 attacking, like when they played against Myanmar or Timor Leste, to a 4-4-2 diamond formation with one extra midfielder, like when they played against the Philippines in Singapore. However, there are three things we want to highlight about Thailand's formation and the roles of their players on the field. Firstly, Central back Chris Sada Kaman, number 26, is the one who hangs behind the defensive line to provide cover for Manuel Tombier, who often comes forward for aerial battle or puts pressure on the opponent's striker. This defense system of Thailand leaks, but will only be revealed in the later part of the video. Secondly, the left flank is Thailand's main attack direction with a trio. Fullback Tarathon Bumatan, attacking midfielder and captain Chanathip Songkrasin, and wide forward Superchok Sarachat. However, this will also be a key area for the Golden Star Warriors to exploit. And of course, stay tuned, as this too will also be revealed in the later part of the video. As for Tarathon, although he is a fullback, this player plays extremely creatively. According to statistics from the AFF Suzuki Cup homepage, Thai's number three is leading the player rankings in chances created after three matches, though he did not play the maximum number of minutes. Besides, we must admit that War Elephants possesses high-quality fullbacks because on the opposite side of Tirathorn, Narubadin is also a player who launched the most crosses in the competition so far. Thirdly, Tarasul Dangda is considered the most important factor in Thailand's attacking play as he is extremely effective in facilitating other players moving forward. That role is somewhat known as false nine, though it is not quite as obvious as what you often see in European football today. Now, let's take a look at how war elephants organize their defense. When falling into a passive position or losing possession, it looks like Thailand also uses the famous Gegen pressing tactic. The goal is simple, not allow the opponent to cross their midfield and recover the ball as quickly as possible. When the opponents have the ball in the center of the pack, Thailand still uses the back four system, but they tend to make tactical fouls to slow their opponents down 
while minimizing the chance of being penalized. According to statistics, Thailand has committed 54 fouls in the past four games, equivalent to 13.5 fouls per game, but they only received three yellow cards in the matches against the Philippines and Singapore. Most of their fouls, as mentioned above, were not committed in dangerous areas of their half. It can be seen that Thailand defended extremely proactively, and this was based on the collective quality showing the equal strength of the war elephants. However, we need to understand that the opponent will have a chance to hurt Thailand if there is a destruction in a sensitive moment of the match. And so, this is also the leak that random football exposes about Thailand. According to the author's objective assessment, Thailand's first leak is the right central back position where Manuel Beer is playing. Beer is a giant, no doubt, but slow and clumsy. At the end of 2019, the 28-year-old defender made a similar defensive mistake in Malaysia's equalizing goal at Bukit Jalil Stadium. It was a positional error, but more about the ability to handle open play. Manuel Beer is a stopper, he often rushes forward to intercept passes and make aerial battle and let his partner Chris Sadakaman cover behind. Therefore, Tianlin needs to be especially hardworking in moving up and down to lure the German-born player out of his position. Thus, the space behind Beer will open up for the wide forward, most likely Van Dijk, to penetrate. Thailand's second leg is on the left flank, most likely the channel between left central back and full back. The 4-4-2 diamond formation is deployed in defensive situations and we can see the gap between the channels of the two defensive lines. When Filipino striker Angel Girado stepped back to receive the ball, it could be seen that the Thai left central back held his position because of his covering habit, while stopper Manuel Beer could not move diagonally to leave his right centre-back position. Therefore, defensive midfielder Fitiwat had to close Girardo down. Notice how the channel of the left side of Thai's defence has been exploited in the context that the central midfielder did not coordinate well with the fullback. The war elephants almost paid the price because if Angel Girado made a through ball to his teammate who was running into the channel, perhaps the Philippines would have scored a goal. Now, let's take a look at how Thailand organized their attacking play. In a lot of attacking plays, Thai defensive midfielder drops deep to form a back three with the two central defenders to build up from the back, meaning they push both of their fullbacks forward, but Tirathon tends to stick in more than narrow batting on the opposite side, whose duty was making crosses and dribbling more. As I mentioned above, the left flank is the main attacking direction of Mano Polking's team. When the ball is moving upfield, Thai striker Superchuk will move out wide, while Tirathon plays in the inner corridor. This tactic is very similar to Chelsea under Thomas Tuchel, with Hassan Odoi staying close to the touchline and Ben Chilwell operating in the half-space area. The statistics show that Tirathon is the most creative player in AFF Suzuki Cup 2020, even though he is a fullback. So bringing this defender upfield is the main purpose of diversifying the attacking options, especially if Thailand encounters an opponent that defends with a large number of players. In a situation close to the touchline, Tirathon loves to coordinate with a central midfielder or captain Chanathip in one-two pass and short overlaps. This will be a great challenge for the right back of Vietnam in the next two matches. On the right flank, Narubadin doesn't tend to stick in but crosses more often than Tirathon. 
This offensive tactic is still inspired by Chanathip, who moved across the pitch in front of the opposing defence, aiming to make an attacking triangle as mentioned above. For Terasil Dangda, his years of playing at the top level at home and abroad have truly made him a complete striker in Southeast Asia. In addition to his target man role, this player can play as a false nine. The purpose of which, as mentioned, is to deflect the opponent's defense so that other strikers can quickly cut into spaces. Regarding the general play of Thailand, we would like to make the following observations. Thailand will narrow the field when losing possession and widen the field when in possession. They put pressure on very quickly to recover the ball once losing control of it. Besides, this team will pass a lot against Vietnam, aiming to create more spaces if the AFF Cup holders move up to close them down. On the contrary, when Vietnam does not apply pressure, Thailand will have time to handle the ball more properly. To cope with this kind of situation, Vietnam should play with a deep formation, paying special attention to the gaps between the lines and between positions on the field to avoid any irregular balls or surprise through balls. With the current quality of the team, Vietnam should not operate with two strikers but exploit the two legs mentioned above. Finally, we will make predictions about the tactical formations of both teams. For Thailand, we believe they will use a 4-4-2 diamond formation with Chanathip in the attacking midfield position behind Superchok and Terasodanga. This probably depends on the quality of the Golden Star Warriors, but it would be interesting for Thailand to operate with a 4-3-3 formation, though we don't believe they are brave enough to play with this system. For Vietnam, hopefully, coach Pak Hang Seo will choose a 3-5-2 formation with two agile strikers, Kong Phuong and Van Thuan or Van Duc. Besides a midfielder who is good at passing the ball quickly, like Suan Chong, could also be in good use, though it would be relatively difficult for the number six to start in such a physically demanding match. Generally, random football thinks that Thailand is rated higher than Vietnam due to its recent performance and quality of players. But that doesn't mean this would be an easy victory for war elephants. And who knows if Vietnam will be the winner of this semi-final? And to end today's video, we hope to continue to make more analytical videos about Singapore or Indonesia as the next opponent of the Golden Star Warriors.